Hello and welcome, I'm Bob Belf, and today we're here to talk about WebSphere Commerce version 9 and the cost savings you can get uh, by using Docker. So as you have probably seen in many announcements uh, to this point, uh, WebSphere Commerce version 9 is based on Docker, which is a container framework that allows you to easily distribute reusable packages and servers essentially uh, in your environment so you can quickly uh, horizontally scale. And today I'm going to show you the cost savings you could gain just by simply moving to version 9. Uh, and this is only with regard to the savings you get from Docker. Uh, I'm not going to get into any of the other savings that you would get by moving to WebSphere Commerce, which is a ton of savings because it's the best e-commerce platform on the planet uh, and the different things that you can do with it is far beyond uh, what you can do in any of the other packages out there especially when you start to bring in things like artificial intelligence and some of the new watson features uh, that really augment what your line of business users can do so enough with the webster commerce commercial Let's get at. Let's go ahead and uh, get to this uh, this Docker stuff because I'm actually very excited about Docker. Uh, it it brings to the platform something that I think has been missing for a very long time. Containerization has been out for a while, and I think IBM has done a fantastic job uh, with regards to how WebSphere Commerce is taking advantage of this in the way they split out the four different servers. So if you're not familiar with the four different servers, um, basically it's a transaction server, a search server, an extension server, and a store ser storefront server. So um, those are the four primary servers that make up WebSphere Commerce version nine. Everything has been separated out so things like a true headless storefront is completely possible now, as you may have seen in my other video about uh, Zobris Consulting's Mobicom uh, storefront based on React. So that's a prime example of a, a headless storefront that really takes advantage of the REST APIs that Webster Commerce brings to the table. So enough of that, we're gonna go ahead and launch the ROI calculator. So in the ROI calculator, we can go ahead and set up a series of parameters. So what I've done here is I've, just like I described, I went ahead and made the values uh, to what a version nine implementation would be. So we would have four apps in the environment we would have a deployment frequency of about once per month per application. And we're gonna do the bare minimum of four servers. Meaning if you're a high capacity uh, site where you're taking a lot of transactions, you may have three or four or 10 or 20 or 30 transaction servers taking in orders uh, so you can scale. Uh, and some companies actually bump up their number of servers on things like holidays, like Black Friday or Cyber Monday, uh, et cetera. So Docker is going to allow you to actually be able to do that very, fairly quickly at zero cost and zero downtime. And that's really what the savings uh, that you are going to see uh, in this chart. So we're going to completely virtualize, put everything out on uh, the cloud. And we're going to estimate about 20 hours per app per month of uh, maintenance. Uh, for deployment time, it's it's only about two hours because by the time you get done configuring and, and uh, changing code and configuration files today in today's world, um, when you go to deploy it, you know, you may only have downtime, you may have no downtime, but to actually deploy the change, you know, only takes probably on average, let's say two hours. It could take six hours, it could take eight hours. Uh, I'm just throwing that number out there. Uh, so depending on your implementation and your processes, you might want to change that. 
I'm going to estimate for 10 developers. And we're also going to estimate about a week worth of work to get that developer up and running, meaning they've installed the toolkit, they've gotten their developer ID, their access to source control, and within a week they should be able to uh, look at the code and actually deliver uh, changes to the environment. So when we click Savings, you can see here that we have uh, an estimated savings over three years of $390,000, uh, which is a 58.78% savings. So once again, this is for a bare minimum implementation of version nine on Docker. And this only, like I stated before, this only uh, is really relevant to the savings that Docker gives you, not all of the savings that you know, Webster Commerce version nine gives you with um, all of its line of business tooling. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we look at these numbers, uh, infrastructure costs were at about $75,000 over a three year period. And you could see it breaks it down even by like electricity, data center, um, operational, IT operational savings about 33,000 per year or about 14.4 hours per week that you're saving uh, just by moving to uh, version nine. Pretty neat. And then developer productivity, about $71,000 a year. That's pretty much almost a full rack, uh, full developer uh, for your team that you would be saving uh, moving to Docker. Now, let's say that you have the same team Let's say we still have 10 developers, but we have a really, really popular site. Our site is so popular, you know, that we're getting hundreds of thousands of orders a day during, you know, times like Black Friday or Cyber Monday. And we have to bump up our servers, let's say to 70 servers, because that's what it's going to take for them not to crash. Things that like you might have to do the store server, you may have to do the transaction server, uh, you may even have to do the XC server, just depends depending on you know what you have going on in your environment. And you can now see, after I change that to 70, that we basically have about a $1.6 million savings over three years just by using Docker alone. So what I did here is I went ahead and charted out the different savings that you would see um, in your environment, uh, depending on the number of servers, because that's really where the cost is today. You know, when you go to deploy a server in like a, an ND cluster or, um, for a web server um, clustered um, server implementation, you, you have to actually configure each one of those independently and bring them up in the cluster, et cetera. So it's pretty complicated uh, and it takes time and it takes skills uh, to do that. In a Docker environment, you can pretty much spin up another instance of a server with zero downtime and essentially almost zero cost uh, to basically have free horizontal scaling. So when we look at the number of servers down here, this could be any combination of servers. It could be, you know, if we look at like 20 here, you know, that could be five servers of each of the four version nine servers. Probably you would never do that, uh, but it could be uh, 10 transaction servers, five storefront servers and the rest of them are broken out, uh, et cetera. So as you can see here, as you move to the right of the number of servers, the savings get more and more for the infrastructure cost optimization. You're not saving any more money on operational costs or developer productivity because those are pretty much the same. What you're saving is the ability to send out updates to these servers pretty much at no cost. Uh, upgrades are now very cheap or to nothing. 
And, you know, by moving to a Docker based implementation, you, you really do save just tons of money all around where then you can take that money and invest it back into your site uh, or your line of business tooling or users. And so basically, you know, that chart sh um, shows all of the different savings you can get depending on how big your implementation is. So if, uh, if you liked this video, please go ahead and give me a like on YouTube, uh, reshare this, and maybe even subscribe to my channel. And that's it for today, and thanks for watching.